Good afternoon, folks. James from Junkyard Fox. Thank you so much for joining us. And today we have a very special video. Today we have a guest star, my buddy Shane here, and he's going to walk us through on how to go ahead and collect the materials and make a bow drill. Uh, so we're going to start off by identifying a cottonwood tree. And then once we've identified our tree, we're going to uh, cut a couple pieces to make our spindle and our hearth board. And then we will also be collecting materials to make a bearing block or socket and your bow. Excellent. Now, it's no secret that I myself have no clue on how to make bow drills or any primitive fire. So not only are you guys going to be learning if you haven't learned this stuff yet, but I will be along learning alongside with you guys step by step and hopefully by the end of this video I can get my first primitive fire going. So thank you Shin for joining us. Thank you guys for watching. Let's get started. All right, so we're going to be going over the uh, components and tools we're going to be using to make this bow drill set. So we're going to start here with the Condor Primitive Bush Knife designed by Matt Graham. And we're going to be using this knife to craft the spindle and the hearth once we've gathered materials for them. We're going to be using a Baco Laplander folding saw to uh, cut the pieces that we want uh, for our spindle and our hearth. And we're going to be using paracord. Uh, you can make natural cordage if you want to, but it's time consuming to make cordage strong enough for bow drilling. So we're going to use paracord for uh, example for this one because making primitive cordage is not the point of this video. So now we're going to go over the four parts of your bow drill. You have your spindle and your hearth board. The spindle is what's drilling into your hearth to make your coal. So for this set, this is a uh, willow with a cottonwood root hearth board. These are both very readily available uh, where I am in Arizona. Um, you can improvise uh, with materials pretty much wherever you are in the country. Um, as long as it's a soft material and you can make, say, a dent with your thumbnail in it, and it will uh, work for your friction fire sets. Next, we have our bearing block. This one happens to be the knee bone of a cow, and it works very well because of this uh, natural divot that it has already in it. And this is uh, going to be putting your downward pressure on your spindle. And you can use wood, um, a rock, a soda can even, if you have it bent right. You can use a lot of things for your socket. You just want to make sure you put a divot in it if it doesn't have one already. And then we're going to have our bow. This is just a bent piece of hardwood. Um, you want it to be nice and light, uh, relatively thin, but not flexible. And it doesn't have to be that long. This one goes from about my fingertip to my elbow. And then last, we have our cottonwood cambium layer. Uh, so this is going to be our tinder nest. And as I mentioned, this is just a cambium layer of cottonwood bark. It's super flammable and, again, readily available in this part of Arizona. So now we're going to go and harvest our materials, and we're going to make a bow drill set. Alright, so we're going to start by identifying a cottonwood tree. I've got one right here to my left. Uh, so cottonwood bark, when the tree gets big and big around, it's very rough and hard and to me it looks a lot like oak. But as you go up the tree, the bark smooths out and almost looks like aspen. And where we have dead branches at the bottom of the tree, we have live ones at the top. So then we have another cottonwood over here, a live one that's bent over. This is a cottonwood leaf. It's kind of diamond shaped and it has these small rounded serrations and it ends in a point. And they feel a little bit waxy. So then, last thing we're gonna show as an identifier is this bark. So this is the inner cambium layer of the cottonwood bark. It's nice and fibrous and peels off really easy. When it's peeling off like this, this is the stage you wanna collect your materials at. 
Anything before this might be too dense. Anything after this might be a little bit too soft and you won't have quite as uh, sturdy of a set. All right, so here we have a cottonwood branch that we're gonna use to make our hearth board. It has a couple of natural splits, which I really like. It's got that peeling cambium layer. So this should be good for uh, the hearth. Cottonwood is very soft and cuts easily with a saw. Uh, so we're gonna find something to use for our spindle and we'll head back to camp. All right, so we're going to be using this branch right here for our spindle. It's nice and straight. Um, it is past that uh, stripping cambium layer, but this one also looks like it was a piece of driftwood. Uh, so it's also gonna be seasoned really nicely for this. So we'll just break this off. And I'm gonna use probably from here to somewhere up here for my spindle. All right, so we're here with some kind of uh, species of willow. Don't know the exact kind, but we're gonna be using this uh, branch down here to make our bow. All right, so we've got our uh, section of willow for our bow. We're gonna just break off these small branches real quick. So what I look for uh, in a bow is something that's gonna be stiff, not super flexible, because a flexible bow is harder to work with. Um, I like it to be from about fingertip to mid bicep or elbow. It doesn't have to be as long as up to your shoulder. The um, longer the bow is, the more rotations you'll get uh, per uh, bowing motion. So this should work pretty well for our bow. All right, so we're gonna be using this juniper for our bearing block. Uh, juniper is a coniferous tree that grows a lot in the sparse desert areas in Arizona. And even when it's dead, it's pretty resinous. So it'll work pretty well for this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this off. And it's a lot harder than the cottonwood, so it's gonna be a little longer to cut. All right, so now that we've gathered our materials, uh, we're gonna go ahead and start crafting it out. I'm gonna start with my hearth board. So I'm just gonna clear this area and I'm gonna uh, do some light batoning on top of the log here. Batoning is not a practice that I normally uh, do all that much, but for the sake of this video and to show the technique, we'll go ahead and do it. So we have this natural split running right down in here. So we're going to take the baton, just lightly on the back of the knife. Now we've already got that split. And then just torque the knife. And we've got the cottonwood split in half. So I'll actually use the other piece of that. We're gonna go ahead and flatten out part of this. And your hearth board doesn't need to be this long. Uh, as long as you can set your foot on one end and still have space to make your uh, divot, then you should be fine. Then I'm going to turn it over and flatten out the bottom a bit. It doesn't have to be totally flat, just enough so it's not rolling on the ground later. 
All right, so we've got our hearth board finished. This is a good example of uh, needing to pay attention to your uh, wood. This end is a little bit better than this end where it's starting to slowly rot. So we're going to use this end when we do make our uh, notch and make our coal. So now that our hearth board is finished, we're gonna put it off to the side and we're going to work on our spindle. Again, you need to pay attention to the stick itself. This one has a split, so this is going to be up in our socket instead of down burning in the hearth board. So I'm going to go ahead and start uh, shaping that out. I'm going to use the knife in one place. I'm not gonna be uh, carving out in front of me with it. I'm just gonna be taking nice, small, controlled cuts. So for our spindle, we are going to want one end to be uh, more dulled, and then that'll be the end that goes into the hearth board. The other end, we're gonna have like a sharpened pencil, so it's nice and thin and pointed. So we're gonna keep working on that now. We're gonna remove a lot of material because we do want it to be pretty thin. So that's rounded out now. All right, so now that the spindle and the hearth are pretty much finished and out of the way, we're gonna start working on the bow. So I'm going to put a notch on one end and a hole through the other end. And because the tip of this knife is pretty broad, I'm uh, going to also be using a Mora knife for this because it's got a nice narrow tip. So the spot that I'm going to have the uh, hole, I'm going to be flattening it out a little bit on both sides. I'm gonna flip it over and uh, make it thinner on the other side as well. I'm gonna check it, make sure it's about even. It doesn't have to be perfectly even, but I like it to be as close as I can. So this will be good for that, uh, for the whole end. So I'll start drilling that right about at the midpoint here. And once I've got it started with the large knife, I'm gonna start uh, refining it with the smaller one. All right, now we're gonna flip it over, find the same spot, and drill in from the other side, and we're gonna make the meat in the middle. All right, so we've got our hole drilled in the one end, and we want it just big enough for a piece of paracord to be able to pass through. We don't want it to be super loose, uh, so where it is right now should be just about perfect. So now I'm going to put a notch in this end and I'm going to make a pot hook notch. So that'll be good enough to get it started. So now I'm going to carve into this with my mora, and we're gonna just make a shallow pot hook notch to hold the other end of the paracord. Thank you. 
All right, so we've got our hole in one end of our bow and a shallow pot hook notch in the other. So now we're going to go ahead and string the bow. So I'm going to start with the end of the paracord going through the hole. And it's going to be a little bit tight. That's a good thing. We don't want it to be going through loose or it can uh, slip out a little. And we're just going to tie a simple overhand knot into that and pull that down. So now that's not going to go through the hole. So now we want to measure out our bowstring to have a good bit of extra length to it. So I'm going to give it something like uh, eight or nine inches. And now on this end, I'm going to just be putting a slip knot. So if you haven't tied a slip knot, we're going to be making a bite in the rope or a spot that it folds over on itself. We're going to be wrapping it around. And now we just made another loop. And we're going to pass the tail end of the cord through that loop and tighten it down. And now that's going to be going over into our pot hook and we'll tighten it in. Now we've got a lot of extra cord here. So because we have so much extra cord, we can use really, really fat spindles if we want to, or we can tighten it down to use really thin ones. That's the beauty of having uh, the hole on the end of the cord. And if we wanted to do that, we'll just lash it off. So the next thing we're gonna do is carve a divot into our bearing block. So we're just doing some finishing work on our bearing block here choking up on my knife to make nice, smooth scooping cuts to make a divot for the top end of our spindle. And anytime you're cradling a project in your hand, you want to be very careful with your knife. If, it, if your knife slips, you can stab yourself in your hand, and especially in the field, that is a very difficult injury to take care of. So you need to be taking a lot of precautions here. And if you're not comfortable holding it in your hand, you can be drilling it down on the log as well, same way as we were doing earlier. So our bearing block is pretty much finished and ready to go. Uh, before we start making our fire, we're going to process our tinder bundle. This is the uh, cambium layer of the cottonwood bark, and we want it to be nice and fine. If it doesn't look like something a bird would lay an egg in, it's not gonna be good enough. So we're going to rough this up a little bit. I'm actually going to lay my hat down to catch any really fine stuff that falls out and we'll use that for our target area. I'm just going to rough this up between my hands. Make it really fine and soft. And now we've got that pretty fine in here. So we're going to be pulling the stuff from inside the hat, putting that right in the middle. So now we have a nice hand-sized tinder bundle. I'm just going to wrap it with a slightly larger piece of bark. That way I've got something to hold on to when I'm blowing it in flame so I don't catch my hand on fire. And again, I'm just gonna open up my target area, put a little bit more fine stuff in it. and we'll be good to go to start our fire now. So now the first step in turning the bow drill sticks into an actual fire set that has made fire is we're going to make a divot in our hearth board. I'm just gonna take the tip of our knife and the spindle to measure it out. So I'm going to put it about a quarter inch away from the edge of my hearth board And I'm going to just start making small scooping cuts, same way I was doing to make the divot for the socket. So 
So that will probably be just fine as it is. I'm just gonna tweak it a little bit more. All right, so that'll work. So now I'm going to be bowing on my hat because I don't want to be throwing sand into my bow drill. All right, so now we're going to burn in our set. So burning in is what we do before we carve our notch to make the actual coal. This is how we see if the set's going to work. And pretty much this is your trial by fire for learning friction fire. Because if you can't make it smoke doing this, you're not going to be able to make a coal. So I'm going to go ahead and take my stance. And I'm going to have one knee on the ground and the other leg up 90 degrees. And now I'm going to load the spindle into the bow. To do that, I'm going to put the bottom end, the end that's going to be burning into the hearth board, on the inside of the string. And I'm going to be twisting it down. And that nice tight sound that you heard, if it doesn't want to kick out, it's not going to be tight enough. So this will work. So I'm going to put the uh, bottom end of the spindle into the divot we made. I'm going to get our socket and I'm going to put this on top. And now I'm going to start bowing. I'm going to go slow. We don't need to be using a lot of pressure yet or a lot of speed. We're just feeling it out. So I can see that I'm starting to get some brown dust and a little bit of smoke. So I'm going to keep going until I've burned it to the diameter of the spindle. All right. So you can see that the spindle and the hearth board both were burning very nicely together. I'm going to cut my notch on this side so you can watch the coal form. So I'm just going to take my mora, and I'm going to bisect this notch, so I'm going right down the middle of it. I'm going to make a mark. So I have a mark right in the middle, so I'm going to carve on either side of that. And see how I'm coming into the top first? I like to go through my top of the notch and into it uh, from the top before I go down the sides so I can see that it's going to be in the right place. Uh, this is personal preference. You can cut whatever part of the notch first that you want to. And I'm going to hurry up with this because the sooner I can make this fire, the sooner these flies will be out of my face. So your notch doesn't have to be very wide. I actually prefer to keep mine a little bit narrower. Um, that way when my dust is piling, it doesn't also risk my spindle being uh, popped out and riding out that notch. So you want it to be about just shy of halfway to the center of your divot. So I'm gonna make a few more cuts. And then I'm there. So now if you look down the divot, you can see there's still a little bit of wood here at the bottom. So I'm going to carve that out. Because if there's wood stuck at the bottom still, it's going to potentially uh, make your coal stick. So now that I have my divot burned in and my notch carved, I'm going to take my spindle and see how much of it I can see through the bottom of that divot. And that'll show me if the spindle is going to be connecting with the dust. And it looks good. So the spindle connecting with the dust is how ignition is achieved. So now I've got that all ready to go. I'm going to put my coal catch on my hat under my hearth board. I'm going to get back up into my bow drill stance. I'm going to take slow strokes with light pressure to start. We just want to build up this dust. I'm going to pick it up. All right. 
So we can see that the dust is smoking on its own. So I'm gonna be very careful now. I'm gonna tap on the hardboard with the spindle. And that releases the dust. So I'm going to very carefully move this to my fire nest. And I'm going to just tap that in. Here's where the magic happens. There you go. Less pressure, more speed. Beautiful. Now keep that up for 10 seconds. Stop. All right, you've got to burn 10. So now we're gonna cut your notch. All right, so I'm gonna be just marking on the board for where James is gonna be cutting to make his notch. And we're gonna go with a triangular notch instead of the square that I normally do. Now with this shape, it's coned out at the bottom, so the dust piles in a pyramid shape. And we want it to be roughly an eighth of the notch wide. So when he gets that cut, that should be good to go. Light pressure to start. You just want to get spinning. There you go. Now until you have smoke, keep that pressure. And use the full length of your bow. Keep that rhythm, I like that. Beautiful. Keep that up. You're starting to fill your notch with dust. Now you have your rhythm, hold that. Stop. You have a coal. Very carefully, take your spindle out. Very carefully. Right now, tap on the edge of your hearth board. All right. Good job. So you're going to take your coal to your tinder. And don't make it drop. Just put it in. Oop. But then you add two parts to your coal. <laughs> All right, so tuck that down. A little bit. And that'll just smolder for a minute. So let it breathe. Thank you. All right, now let's get over towards the fire. Now squeeze that very gently around your coal. And when you're blowing into it, hold it above your face. That way you're not getting the smoke in your eyes and bring your hands down. I wrapped it up on the bottom for you to hold. Otherwise, you're gonna burn your hands. Blow a little bit harder. The more smoke you see, the harder you can blow. Look at you go. Yeah! God, that was that was intense. You're gonna burn your finger. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that! Man, that's a burst right there, man. <sighs> now you just gotta uh, do that 10, 15 coals in a row to keep your uh, rhythm. That yeah. 
that's the best way to learn your rhythm is just to practice and practice and practice. I'm, I'm gonna get like, like go I'm until your arm is sore. Day. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm really like I am so focused when I get home to just practice this like several times a day. Yeah, like I make a call every single morning before I go to work, either hand drill or bow drill, yeah. to keep in practice. So that's what I'm going to recommend. Get up early, like an hour early, yeah. practice your friction fire. Okay, awesome. Well, folks, that's about the conclusion of this video. First things, uh, I want to give a big thank you to my buddy Shane for teaching us how to gather these materials, how to craft the set, and then make a bow drill fire. And he helped me. He'll help guide me, him and his gal, Naya, on how to get this bow drill going. And I made my first friction fire. So this is a first for Junkyard Fox. So thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Now, one thing we were just discussing is some of these materials aren't readily, readily found in West Texas. So as I practice, and I'm going to be practicing often, is I'm going to be replacing them with items in my area, such as yucca. So Shane was mentioning if it's a wood that you can pinch into it and it's not resinous, that should be pretty good. So from here on, I'm going to practice. Awesome. So guys, if you like this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Comment if you have any questions or any tips or anything like that. Let's get a discussion going. And once again, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys next week with another video. Now go outside and get your boots dirty.